line that we get to in the grocery line, the person says, how much of this can I have? And she says, as much as you want, as long as it fits in the bag. We get to the second item, and the person says, how much of this can I have? As much as you want, as long as it fits in the bag. It takes, according to this person, six times before the person says, so I can have as much of this as I want? Yes. I think that is such an awful description of our culture, and I hope that we can continue to change that. I guess the last thing that I want to, to point out in the uh, Love Your Neighbor as Yourself is that another of our core values is that we do not initiate conversations about faith or in any way put our faith onto the people who are coming for food. Um, we have, I think, volunteers from every faith I have ever heard of have volunteered. And we have people from every faith come to get food. If someone asks me about my faith, I am happy to talk to them. But we don't make, say, praying part of a requirement to get food. And I think this is a good decision. And the story I have for that, that has reminded me over the years that we did make a good decision, is a woman came in, and she shopped for food, and she took her groceries to her car. And about five minutes after she had taken her groceries to the car, she came back in and she found me. And she said, I was actually here last month, and I pulled my car into the parking lot, and I couldn't get out of the car. I hadn't realized that this food pantry was in a church. And I was afraid that if I came in, you would, you know, I would have to listen to uh, uh, some sort of lecture about faith before I could get food. And I didn't think I could do that. But this month, I was so desperate that I decided I had to come in anyway and take the chance. And I just wanted you to know that you all made me feel so welcome that I would tell all my friends that this is an okay place to be. And I thought, how wonderful is that? This is an okay place to be. And that is just, I can't even, I think people say I'm doing this, that I'm doing something for other people. Having somebody say to me that something I did made this an okay place to be is a better blessing than any amount of food that I could give someone else. And so, the thing that compels me has changed. It started out as love your neighbor as yourself. And now, I have to say that we are all made in God's image. My faith says we are all made in God's image. And every person that I meet reflects the face of God. And not only is it every person that reflects the face of God, the reflections are not broken reflections. The human being may, is certainly imperfect, and in some people, it's really difficult to find a reflection, but it is there. In my, in the midst of this university campus, with my graduate degrees, and all the things I love about education and having intelligent conversations and all of those things, I have to say I don't value them very much anymore. I value compassion and sharing and some of the things I have learned both from clients and from volunteers. And I'm going to give you a couple of examples. There's a man that's about 10 years older than I am, and he comes with his wife. Uh, three or four times a year, and has for probably five years. And so I, you know, would recognize him and say hello. And two years ago, I was following my daughter's band, high school band, because she was a senior in high school, in the Labor Day Parade. I was one of the parent volunteers sort of, you know, walking behind the band in case a student 
student got sick or you know, needed some help, there would be parents there who could step out with them. And this man and his wife were along the parade route, and they were so excited when they saw me, and so I stepped off to talk to him for a few minutes. And he learned that my daughter was in the band. He was, I can't tell you how excited he was, because he had been a member of the Urbana High School marching band when he was in high school. Now, I don't know if this man has a developmental disability. I'm not sure. But I do know he has trouble keeping a job. You know, when he does come around to the pantry, it's because he's lost his job again. And then sometimes I see him in the community and he's excited that he has a job. Now, when he comes to the pantry, he makes a point of coming to find me and giving me a hug and asking me how my daughter is doing by name. And maybe that doesn't seem like a lot, but I myself have trouble remembering somebody's name that I've met. If I only see them three or four times a year, let alone remembering their daughter's name. Greeting someone by name. Asking after somebody that person cares about by name is so much more valuable than I ever realized. He has become a special person to me because he remembers my daughter's name and is excited because they were both in the same marching band 50 years apart. I, I just can't hear you. Can you get it? So, you know, the other thing, I got that, just a couple more minutes. There's one other thing that I really need to explain that I have learned that I still don't do very well, but I'm trying. The second winter we were open, there was a really icy night. And a man came in through the doors with a group of people. <clears throat> he came up to me and he said, I got groceries earlier. I just wanted you to know, you know, in case you were concerned that I was going through the line again, that not everybody in my neighborhood who needed food could fit in my car the first time. So I took the first group home, and I went back to get the rest of them. But I didn't want you to think that I was going to go through and get one myself. Now, first of all, I hadn't recognized that he had come in twice. I can't even imagine knowing my neighbors well enough to know if they needed food, to know if they drive or not, I mean, I guess I would recognize some of my neighbor's cars, but I don't know that I would be able to say, I know how many people in my neighborhood don't drive and need food. And even if I did, I don't know that I would be brave enough to invite them to go to a food pantry with me or to give them a ride, maybe an open invitation to a ride. I mean, I don't know about you. That seems kind of scary to me. What if they ask me for a ride then next week? What if they need rides every day? Would I be able to say no? I don't know. But I have met now so many people who share what they have that is less than what I have, but they share it with people in a way that is so much more generous than I can possibly even imagine. And I'm trying. I have learned a lot, and I'm trying. But all of these interactions with people and all of the different volunteers who do things so much better than I do, and I listen to how they talk to people and I try to learn, have convinced me that every person has something to teach us about God and God's compassion and love for us. Two minutes. I have two minutes. So I'm going to share one more story, a volunteer story, and then I'll. So many of you may be familiar with the story of Moses and a verse that goes something like this. His face was shining from speaking with the Lord, but he didn't know it. So one September, I spoke to an undergraduate social entrepreneurship class about how the pantry got started. And the class required service learning hours, and the pantry was one of the places that people could come to do their hours. 